The way Vaibhav checkmated his opponent Rohan in Comedians on Board 5 was truly spectacular. This checkmate where one bishop controls one diagonal and the other, the other one in such a way that the king is checkmated, it's called as the Borden's mate. And in this video, Praful Zaveri, who is the author of Chess Course, this book, like a book uh, which has all the basic concepts beautifully explained, now explains to you this Borden's mate in great depth. I would request you to watch through this video and try to understand the different concepts in which this works because often you have to set it up even with a queen sacrifice or some sacrifice and this video is going to be very very useful to you. Let us continue our journey of chess with the chess course and today I am going to cover the Borden is made one of the famous checkmating pattern and uh, let me take this opportunity to read out uh, the line from the Borden is made and it says never castle on the queen side in open position if the opponent bishop pair is pointing at you is the lesson to be learned from the 19th century english master samuel borden born 1826 died 1882 and you know like the famous game the final checkmating position from the game between skulder and borden the position you see before on the board uh, which was played in the year 1860 got Christian at the Borden mate. So as you can see in this position that uh, White has castled on long and you know like uh, he just failed to uh, see how the bishop pair were pointing out at him and black initiated a queen sacrifice ripped open the the position and both the bishops on the crisscross diagonals were able to checkmate him. Now let us, you know, go to this original Borden game as to how this checkmating pattern can arise. So here Skulder was white and uh, Borden was black. White started with e4, black replied e5, we have knight f3, d6, the famous Philidor defense. And now here white tried c3, normal in this position is to go ahead with d4 this is one of the idea in this opening but here we see white playing c3 and black immediately counter attack with f5 so that was basically the idea of philidor uh, the philidor depends though it's a passive it's like very very solid and his original idea was to play f5 well we see white continuing here bishop to c4 black played knight f6 putting more pressure on the d4 pawn here and now uh, rather the e4 pawn white ignored this and went ahead with d4 we now see exchanges taking place f captures e4 d captures e5 e captures f3 e captures f6 queen into f6 and now we see white playing g into f3 so uh, the weakness that we have uh, you know uh, fractured pawn structure here black continued knight to c6 and white now played f4 stopping the knight from coming to e5 Borden continued to bishop to d7 and now since you know like castling was not possible for white on the king side you would definitely like to go in for uh, queen side castling and now we see black castling first on the queen side nd2 rook to e8 taking open position see the best place rooks are best placed on the open file this is the simple commandments you have to remember you have to you know like put your pieces on the right position and now we see here white playing queen to f3 and there comes bishop f5 and now what do we see that like okay black you know like when bishop f5 was played white did not feel anything uh, like something is going to happen here and he thought okay I can now very well comfortably castle but you know like he failed to fail to see the ensuing combination you can see this bishop is pointing here queen is pointing here 
imagine if there is no pawn on b2 then you know like black can play bishop a3 check and but of course this pawn also should go away so this is one of the condition which you know help Bowden in launching a mating attack d5 excellent move the missile you know gets loaded the missile on f8 the bishop gets the open diagonal and now your uh, loss of peace is threatened so here white accepted the sacrifice or you know you would be pieced down for no compensation whatsoever and now you can see the rest is easy there came queen into c3 brilliant queen sacrifice and of course it needs to be accepted b into c3 and bishop a3 to declare check and mate and look look at the bishop on f5 how it is you know preventing the escape of the king to c2 and b1 well then so this was you know like this position uh, became famous and it got christianed as Borden says made a fitting tribute to the great english master we now continue our journey in this and we shall now have a look at a similar finale from the game between edward lasker a uh, distant relative of the great emmanuel lasker the second world champion and of course himself a great player and this game was played against fritz england in 1913 so here lasker is white and uh, fritz is black and let us run through this game quickly we see e4 e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 knight to c3 knight f6 bishop to b5 and we now see black playing in d4 so normally like again you know breaking the commandment do means do not move the same piece twice but you know that was a period we call it the romantic era of chess when players used to you know like do not they would not hesitate in breaking the rule they would always like to take their opponent into some unknown territory create you know vast complications on the board and we see here like uh, lasker accepting this knight captures e5 there came queen e7 well you know queen basically blocks this he is you know like he needs to get back this pawn and uh, but it brings the queen into unpleasant position so he played knight f3 knight takes e4 and now we see the threat of discovered check looming so simply white castle and now it's problem for black because white will now be playing rook to e1 and taking command of the open e5 so that's why we see here playing knight to c3 d takes c3 and now what has happened is that since rook e1 is threatened he has to play knight into f3 my apologies d into c3 and then knight into f3 and queen into f3 queen c5 so you know like the bishop would be coming out with a tempo and then you know there is a problem of pain and of course how can black get his bishop out quickly so that is the reason why he played queen c5 and he also you know like is attacking this unprotected bishop on b5 well white played an intermediate move rook to e1 check and now black played bishop e7 you know like is hoping that i will you know now be comfortably be able to castle my queen is defending the bishop on e7 and should not be problem well white protected his bishop moved it to d3 black played d5 and now we see bishop coming so like you know development is very quick for white he has attacked the queen now queen is once again forced to move black mode is queen to d6 so you see like how many moves for queen has been made queen came to e7 and then to c5 and then back to d6 so again white you know starts the raising bishop f4 and also it you know like keeps the file open so here black played queen f6 and is hoping you know like that if once again the bishop move he can exchange the queen but well this allows you know like white goes ahead with a sacrifice it does not care with this and goes with queen into d5 and uh, there is a lot means like problems if at all you know he accepts this uh, sacrifice so he played c6 and now white played queen e4 
Then we see here Black now feeling that okay, he has you know already delayed his castling, so he plays Bishop e6, and now comes Rook e3. Simple idea wants just to you know triple it on the triple with major pieces on the open e5. Black now played Bishop c5, so you know once again an error that of you know moving only playing with one or two pieces. This is not correct. This is in fact. A very good lesson for uh, a beginning player that one should not, you know, concentrate on the development, should not move one piece again and again, should get castled at the earliest. And now we see white ignoring the attack on this rook on e3 and instead attacks the queen. Queen goes to h6 for an exchange. And now we see uh, rook g3 here. So, like white takes away the rook from attack. Now, there comes bishop f8 to defend the threat on g7. We see this two chessmen were pointing at this. And now, here, white completed his development rook d1 and takes up a very good position. So, now black was really worried that, you know, his king is stuck in the center and all pieces of white pointing at him. So he thought, okay, let me get out of the trouble and simply played, you know, castle long. But then again, like in the original Bodensis game, he failed to see this. You can see this finale here, it's controlling here. And imagine this bishop coming to a6. And if there is no pawn b7, then it's check and mate. So you see this mating finale is not difficult for any player to judge. White had no hesitation in going in for a queen sacrifice. Queen capture c6 check and of course it's forced to accept b capture c6 and we have bishop a6 check and mate. Patterns keep repeating on the board. So if you like know this pattern, it becomes easier for you to understand, you know, like you'll not be falling victim. And of course, you know, like you will never lose an opportunity to spring such a mate when the position arrives. And now we'll continue our journey. Our, the next position is from the game between Deemer and Ports placed at Lindau in 1948. And of course, this game will cement our understanding that patterns do keep repeating and masters know it. So you can like see this pattern number three position in the Bodensis checkmating pattern that it's very familiar to the previous one between Lasker and Fritz. You can see this, I think no difference whatsoever in the pattern of, you know, queen and the bishop. They are rightly in the same position. Let us just go back and let us have a look at what is the difference of the placement of these three pieces as compared to the previous position. So here, what do we see that, for example, like let us take this when black castle long so we have bishop on e5 so in demer port's game it is you know bishop is on f4 and here the, this is same like bishop is on d3 queen was on f3 so like you can see almost everything repeating and that's why the master had no hesitation in playing this queen into c6 wonderful it needs to be accepted again b capture c6 and again bishop a6 check and mate so wonderful idea to bring about the bowden mate and uh, let us conclude the learning of this pattern by having a look at the game of peruvian master esteban canal this 19th century master born in 1896 died in 1981 the game which canal played against an unknown opponent is billed as Canalsis Immortal. Well, you know, Immortal game, we relate the famous Anderson Kizatsky game in which, you know, like white sacrificed these two rooks and then a queen. You can say like almost sacrificed everything to declare checkmate. So similarly, this game also had uh, something of that sort of finale where, you know, like uh, we see that um, Canal sacrificing his queen and two rooks to bring about the Bodensis mate. 
and uh, i would like to say something about more about this game uh, the famous chess author irwin chernevet said a man might play a million games of chess and never duplicate kanal's feat so this is one game which we shall examine so kanal was white and his unknown opponent black this game was played in the year 1934 at budapest let us have a look at the game so you know like i'm switching between a traditional uh, way of teaching i'm using also the book and then also switching back to the game using chess base so kanal was white e4 d5 the scandinavian or the famous center counter of the old name he takes d5 queen takes d5 knight to c3 and now queen to a5 d4 c6 knight to f3 bishop to g4 going in for pinning white now played bishop f4 again you know pointing the bishop and on the right square e6 h3 putting a question to the bishop what do you want to do with it there came bishop into f3 queen into f3 bishop b4 and like putting pressure on this pin piece and threatening to spoil the pawn structure of course this is you know like adequately defended by queen and bishop so like there is no problem of losing a piece here white just played bishop e2 black continued his development and d7 is hoping to you know like castle on the on the queen side now here white put a question before black what do you want to do with the bishop you want to give up the bishop for the knight or you know like you want to retreat back and here we see you know like there's an illusion that you know because the rook is unprotected uh, in the line of the queen so black thought that white cannot capture my bishop and in this assumption he played long castle and we see now the condition you know like uh, the bordenses mate can come but here first he needs to break the cycles and he easily accepted this a into b4 it's brilliant pawn sacrifice and let me you know read out from this so like when a3 was played white puts a question mark before the bishop our black in a state of hallucination that white can never dare to capture his bishop decided to castle long and we have a flashback of anderson kizetsky and that's why you know this is billed as canals is immortal a into b4 white is offering his rook and black now needs to otherwise you know the material balance will go in favor of white so black here played queen captures a1 king to d2 brilliant move now is offering one more rook is not parried of the rook on h1 black needs to you know accept this sacrifice queen into h1 and now what do we see that you know the stage is set for the bordens is made you can say this bishop on f4 pointing here queen is pointing on c6 bishop on e2 ready to you know come on to a6 and here like no hesitation in playing queen capture c6 check b capture c6 absolutely forced and bishop a6 check and mate to bring in about the bordan c6 check and mate well then so what are the steps to bordan c6 check mate we have seen this four examples and you can like basically see as i said earlier that you know king has castle long and the bishops are pointing at him then it's danger so basically the steps are as under the two bishops operating on criss cross diagonals constitute the mating force against the king which has castle long one of the bishop operates on an adjacent diagonal near to the opposing king which has castle on the queen side this deprives the king of the access to b1 or b8 square the second bishop operates on the adjacent diagonal and finally the stage is to rip open the diagonal for this bishop by a sacrifice as we have seen so i hope this four positions 
must definitely have help you in understanding as to how the Bowden cis check and mate can take place. And of course, you can you know refer this in the book, the new edition of the chess scores. And uh, I have to tell you that we have a promo offer running. It's a 25% discount. You can buy this book at Chessbase India and uh, you know means improve as a player. With this, I take your leave for now and we'll be back with the next edition of Chess with the Chess Course. Have a great day. Once again, my greetings to all of you, to all the sports person, to the coaches, the trainers and everybody connected with sports. Jai Hind.